Today we're beginning the law of sine and the law of cosine. Um, and we will use this when we deal with um, non-right triangles. Um, you, you can use it with a right triangle, it's just it's the hard way. So um, with right triangles, Sokotoa is a lot easier. Um, so as we begin here, I've got this triangle um, A, B, C. And you'll remember that we call across from the A, um, we call that side little a. This across from the, the big C is little c. Across from the B is B right here. Um, we're going to let this be the height of that triangle. And then what I can do, since that's the height, it makes a nice little right angle here. Um, and I've got two separate triangles. I've got triangle A, this is point D if you can't see it. Um, a, D, C, versus, and then triangle B, D, C. Um, so looking at sine of A would be equal to, in this triangle, H over B, because it's the opposite over hypotenuse. Um, and that implies that H would be equal to B times sine of A. Um, in this little triangle, we can say that sine of B is equal to H over A, thus implying that H is equal to A sine B. Well, you may notice, well, hopefully you notice, this is the same H in both of them. So this H in both of these is equivalent, um, and so we can set these two things equal to each other. So we can say B sine of A is equal to A sine of B. And the way that we typically see the law of sine, um, the way that I like to write it, is I'll come through here and divide both of these by little a, little b. So notice my a's cancel here, my b's cancel here. And the way that I write the, the law of sine is that sine of A over A equals sine of B over B. Um, you can extend this out if we were to keep going. It would also be oh, not C, sine of C over little c. So you can pick, um, you need any two of these ratios. So I could use C and A together if I wanted or whatever the situation called for. Um, Sometimes, I have seen some books that write it this way. They'll say A over sine A equals B over sine B. That's, that's fine. It's just not my go-to. So um, by all means, help yourself out. Um, but yeah, whatever. So um, then that, this right here, is typically what we call, we refer to when we talk about the law of sine. Um, the formula for the area of a triangle, if you notice here, in this, um, this triangle, we, we know Back in geometry, we learned that the area of a triangle, area of a triangle is equal to one half, well, base times height. Okay, in this particular triangle, our base is C and our height is, is H. Um, so we can say this is one half, um, our base is C, our height, H could either be one, could be either one of those. Um, we could say B sine of A. Uh, so the way that, sorry, let me, well, that's one way to get paper. Um, what we just came up with, we just said this, one half C, B sine A. The way that I typically, which is fine, the way that I, area of a triangle, the way that I typically think of it though is that the area of a triangle is equal to one half and then you need all three letters. And I'll just say, so it can be A, B, sine, C, and this is my go-to for area of a triangle, that I need um, to know uh, two sides and the angle in between it. Now you could also say that's equal to one half B, C, sine, A, or you could say the area of a triangle is equal to one half A, C, sine, B. Notice what, I'm just getting all three letters that show up here. And when we talk again about our, our triangles, big A, big B, little C, um, here's little a, here's little b, there's little c. So a, b, c, so it's little a, little b, and big c. So it's two sides and then the angle that's in between them. And that can work for any, um, notice on this one, b, c, a, b, c, a, um, and a, c, b, a, c, b. Okay, so that's the introduction um, so far for the law of sine. Now what we want to talk about um, here's the formula that I prefer, even though I generated one slightly different, same idea. Okay, what I want to talk about now is what we call the ambiguous case. Now, you might remember from geometry, hopefully you do, that we have, um, we have congruent triangles. We have different rules that let us have congruent triangles. We have side, side, side. We have side, angle, side. We have angle, angle, side. 
we have angle side angle, and we also have hypotenuse leg. Um, so these are ways that you can prove that one triangle is exactly the same as the other. Um, we have a few things, we have a few situations that are not congruent triangles. Um, and one of those is angle, angle, angle. And what I do in that one is I, I always, I'll stand at the front of the class, so sorry, and I'll make a triangle with my hands and say, okay, notice these angles haven't changed. And then I pull my, my hands apart, and sorry, I'm no longer on the screen, but if you notice, this little bit, I could make, well, sorry, this triangle, pull this across, this is a, a bigger triangle, but the angles didn't change, see it going all the way up, whatever. Um, that's not enough to know that our triangles are congruent. The other one is that I can have side, side, angle. Um, and this one, I like to say, this is a, well, it's a bad word, backwards. So a bad word, see it? Um, a bad word backwards is not a way to prove congruent triangles. But sometimes we see this when we're doing the law of sine. So that's what we're gonna talk about when it comes to the ambiguous case. Um, so say, for example, I have, this is angle K, this is angle, or point K, uh, point O, point S, and point H. Yeah, did that on purpose. Um, what I have is that this is a, a circle, so this radius and this radius are the same. So we've got OH and OS are congruent. Um, and then notice here, angle K is congruent to itself, and segment KO is congruent to itself. So I've got these two triangles. Pretend I can draw. This is uh, KOH. And I've got triangle uh, what is this? K O S. Well notice in these two triangles, angle K is congruent to angle K. K O is congruent to K O. And O H we just said was congruent to O S. Well this is angle side side. Oh dear, that is the bad word. I'm funnier in class, sorry. Um, so angle side side is the bad word. This becomes an ambiguous case. And you'll notice this triangle here is not congruent to this triangle here. Um, so when you see something, when anytime you see the bad word angle side side, you want to check and see, could it possibly have two triangles like this one right here? Um, another thing to point out, well then if it does have two triangles, what's going to happen is if you see, say we call that measure angle X, that, this angle has a measure of X. Well, since this OSH is an isosceles triangle, because these are both radii of the same circle, this angle right here has to have the same measure of X. Well, then this one, this big one out here, is going to be supplementary with X. So this one out here has a measure of 180 minus X. Um, if we were in radians, we could say that it's pi minus x. And I typically in pre-calc, we do these problems in degrees, but sometimes my IB classes, I'll see this sort of stuff um, where they start using radians. So since 180 degrees is the same as pi, we can uh, is the same as pi radians, then we can use that. Um, so what happens with the ambiguous case is that um, you may find a situation where your um, you, you find an angle, that's the first answer that you'd get, um, and then you have to check its supplement, and it could be that its supplement would also be, so this angle right here, this angle S, say I found it to be uh, 55 degrees, then an angle H would be the supplement of that, which is, let's see if I can subtract, um, 125. Okay, and that's how that would work. And we'll look at some other examples with, um, with actual numbers, and I'm going to do a second video with the law of cosine.